Hello, this is Leary Meadows, and in this session, we're going to continue and wrap up our discussion on direct cost variances, flexible budgets, and management control. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. And we left off here, so let's go ahead and talk about getting budgeted input prices and input quantities. Now, we can get these prices and quantities. We can get these from a number of different sources, actual input data from past periods, maybe data from other companies that have similar processes. Maybe we've developed some standard by the firm itself. Now, what is a standard? A standard is simply a carefully determined price, cost, or quantity that is going to be used as a benchmark for judging performance. That's why we have these standards in here. And that's how we can compute whether we have a price variance or efficiency variance for either direct materials or direct manufacturing labor because we're carefully benchmarking, we're carefully determining that price, cost, or quantity that's going to be used so we can see how well did we perform to our budget. Now, our variances are going to be generalized. Each variance is going to have its own account. Now, when we're doing our journal entries, favorable variances are credits. Unfavorable variances are debits. And then we're going to see here how variance accounts are generally closed into the cost of goods sold at the end of the period. So let me switch uh, screens here. And let me go to This right here, and actually wrong one here. And I want to share, and where's my e-text here? And let's go to this tab here, and this is where we want to see, and I believe this is it. So let me just make sure here, because this is where I want to go. Yep, this is where I want to go. Okay. So we took a look, look at this here, price and efficiency variance for drink materials, and price and efficiency variance for direct labor. Now, let's take a look here at our journal entry. We're assuming a traditional manufacturing where we are not using just in time. So all the materials are going into a storeroom before the requisition and transferred to the production floor. So when we first purchase our materials, we are going to isolate at that time the price variance here. And if we remember, our price variance was $44,000 favorable. So what does that mean? That means we are going to have a credit. So a favorable variance is a credit. So I know I'm going to have a credit here for $44,400. This amount here, this 666000 is what I should have spent based on my level of output. This right here, the account, and so that's my direct materials control is going to be debited for $666,000. My favorable price variance uh, for materials, $44,400. And then my accounts payable control for the actual amount I spent on the direct materials. And we saw that right up here. Okay. So now let's take a look at isolating our efficiency variance for materials. So now I'm going to isolate my efficiency variance and I'm going to do this when the materials are transferred to the production floor and we transfer on the books those materials to work in process. So what am I going to debit? Well, I'm first going to debit work in process control for $600,000. Where did I get that $600,000? I got that right over here. That is my flexible budget amount, $600,000. Now I'm going to credit 
to $666,000 for direct materials control. Why am I crediting direct materials control? Because I'm reducing direct materials by transforming into work in process. And I'm going to credit them $666,000. And so where do I get that? I get that from right up here, the actual input quantity times the budgeted price. Now, my efficiency variance is the difference between these two amounts. This is why I debited the work in process. This is why I credited to materials control. So I have a $66,000 unfavorable ver efficiency variance. So what does that mean? Remember, um, unfavorable variances, what are we going to do? We're going to debit those. We are going to debit those. So there's where my bulk of my, that's where my transaction is for isolating the efficiency variance. So remember, when we're first buying our materials and we're putting them in the storeroom, that's when we're isolating our, our cost or our price variance. Our efficiency variance is actually recorded when we transfer them to the production floor. So now let's take a look at direct labor. And because I'm incurring direct labor as we go along, I can actually isolate my price and efficiency variances all at the same time in one journal entry. So what am I going to do? I'm going to debit work and process control for $160,000. That's the amount of direct labor I'm going to charge for work and process. Where do I get that on that screen here? I get that. That's my flexible budget amount. My flexible budget amount for direct labor, what I'm allowed for direct labor based on the units of actual output I've actually incurred, $160,000 right here. So that's what I'm going to debit. Then I'm going to credit wages payable for the actual amount incurred of $198,000. And I get that from right here. This is what I actually incurred, actual costs incurred which is the actual input quantity times the actual price. So that's where I get that. And then, so this is my debit here. This is my credit. And then I just simply journalize these. What am I going to do? I'm going to debit that price variance for 18000 and labor efficiency variance for 20000 So that is where my journal entries come in at. And then, like we talked about, we can simply close these out to cost of goods sold, yeah, assuming that the amounts are immaterial in nature. If they were not, then um, we could actually use the appropriated amounts, uh, like we learned about in job costing, spreading it out between materials control, work and process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold on the basis of standard cost of direct materials and ending balances. So, and so we can prorate those as well. So that is what I wanted to show you from the book. Since the PowerPoint didn't have the journal entries, it was easier to go to the book here and do that. So now, let's go back to where are we? PowerPoint here and let us unshare that and we already have. So let's take a look at our variances. So standard costing. These are targets or standards that are established for direct materials and direct labor. And the standard costs are according to the accounting system. We just showed you that. And the actual price and usage amounts are compared to standard and variances are recorded here. So that's what we've done. Now, what is our management use of variances? Well, the price and efficiency variances provide feedback to initiate corrective action. We're going to use those standards to control costs and guide managers to appropriate investigations of variances. And how do we do that? Because if we're separating it by price and we're separating by efficiency, then we know who to ask, like we talked about in responsibility accounting, when we talked about master budgeting, we know who to ask. We know what questions to ask. We're also going to use these variances to evaluate performances after decisions are implemented. So what are we trying to do? We want to understand why variance arises, learn, 
and then improve future performance. Now, when we talk about benchmarking, this is a process of where we're continuing, continually examining ourselves, pitting our performance levels against the best levels of performance in competing companies or in other companies that have similar processes. And let's talk uh, common measurement in the airline business, cost of per available seat mile. And here's an example uh, when we're comparing United Airlines with six other airlines. And we want to look at that cost, what was it? The cost per available seat mile. So where's my cost per available seat mile? I can get these numbers here and I'm gonna break these down. For revenue, income, fuel costs, labor costs, total available seat miles, and we can compare ourselves against these other companies. And so here's an example of benchmarking with uh, uh, United Airlines, and they're going against Alaska Airlines here, American Airlines, Delta, JetBlue, Southwest, Southwest, and U.S. Airways. So this way we can compare ourselves to others. And we also want to compare ourselves to ourselves, or not only our actual performance, but where we expect it to be. How do we past that we can not just not just comparing our our current performance to what we budgeted? How well did we? How well did we do compared to prior periods? And that's another common uh, thing that we'll look at with benchmarking. So. This is Leroy Meadows. I want to thank you for joining me. Have a good day.